Hi, I'm Kristen Amdahl and welcome back to my studio. I've been a teacher, designer, and author in the craft industry for over 15 years. In this video, I want to show you some tips and tricks for making one of the projects from my brand new book, 52 Crochet Gifts. In this video, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for making the Josephine Market Bag. A market bag is a thoughtful and conscientious gift. Fill it with flowers or a harvest of special items from your local farmer's market. Or make several bags and roll each of them up tightly inside one of the bags to give a set of reusable grocery bags. You will need 350 yards of number two sport weight yarn, an E4 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, yarn needle, and scissors. For this project, we used one ball of Be So Soulful yarn, which is 87% bamboo, 13% Serona, and comes 380 yards per 3.5 ounce ball. This is shown in colorway Enchanted Jasmine. You can find many beautiful hand-dyed colors of Be So Soulful yarn on my website. First, I'll show you how to make the oval-shaped base of the bag. Then I'll show you how to make this beautiful stitch pattern that reminds me of dragonflies. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to make this clever design of a very sturdy handle. Let's get started. We start by tying our yarn to our crochet hook and doing a beginning chain. I'm doing a smaller chain to begin just for the reduced size sample for the tutorial. But if you're making the full size bag, you do a chain of 26. We're going to then chain three. Chain three counts as our first double crochet. Then we're going to work seven double crochets in the fourth chain from our hook. Remember, we don't count the working loop on our hook, so we'll count back one, two, three, four. Double crochet is yarn over your hook. Insert your hook in the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We'll do that again, yarn over. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, yarn over, pull through two. We're going to do a total of seven double crochets in that same chain. Okay, so our chain three counted as our first double crochet, then seven double crochets in the fourth chain from our hook, and now we'll work one double crochet in each chain across to the last chain. Work eight double crochets in the last chain, and then now working in the free loops of the beginning chain, we'll work one double crochet in each of the free loops around. Okay, we've made it all the way back around the starting chain. So we did the starting chain, did increases on one end, worked straight, worked increases on the second end, and then worked straight. We're going to slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. And we now have an oval. Now, if you're familiar with increasing in circular motifs, that's what we're going to do on either side of the oval. And then we'll work even in pattern down the centers. So for the beginning of round two, we will chain three, which counts as a double crochet, work a double crochet in the same stitch. Then in each of the next seven stitches, we'll work two double crochets in each stitch. which is the typical type of increases you would do on the second round of a circle motif. Okay, now for the even section here, we'll work one double crochet in each stitch across. Now we'll do the same rate of increases for the next eight stitches around the corner. We'll work one, two double crochets into each of the next eight stitches. And now we'll work even across the straight stitches to the end of the round. Slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. And that's what the end of round two of our oval base should look like. Round three begins with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet, double crochet in the same stitch. and one double crochet in the next stitch. So now in typical circular motif fashion, the round three of an increasing circular motif would be two double crochets in the next stitch, 
and one double crochet in the next stitch. And if this was a circle, that's what you would repeat around. But because we're only doing a half circle on either end of this oval, we'll repeat that for our eight repeats for this side and our eight repeats for this side while working even on in between the two half circles. So it's two double crochets in the next stitch and one double crochet in the next. And you want to do that repeat eight times around here. Then work even across the even section. And on the next half circle side, we'll do eight repeats of two double crochets in the next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch. At the end of the round, we'll slip stitch to the top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to join. And that's what the end of round three of our oval base should look like. If you wanted to make a larger bag, you could continue in this established pattern to make the oval base as large as necessary for a bigger market bag or even a beach bag. Then you'll want to work two rounds even in pattern, meaning to work chain three, which counts as our first stitch, and then one double crochet in each stitch around. Okay, now we're ready to begin the two round repeat of the pretty lace walls of the bag. I believe that this stitch pattern reminds me of dragonflies, but you can decide if you think it's flower petals or leaves or dragonflies. It begins with a chain four, which counts as a double crochet chain one. Skip the next stitch and double crochet in the next stitch. Chain three, skip the next three, chain, three double crochets and double crochet in the next double crochet. Chain three, skip the next three double crochets and double crochet in the next double crochet. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain three, skip three, double crochet in the next. Chain three, skip three, double crochet in the next, chain one. And that's what we'll, we will repeat around the entire round. At the end of the round, chain one, and slip stitch to the third chain of the chain four at the beginning of the round to join. Round seven begins with a chain four, double crochet in the next double crochet, and then in the next double crochet, we're going to work two double crochet cluster, which is yarn over your hook, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook in the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook, chain three, single crochet in the same stitch, chain three, Work another two double crochet cluster in the same stitch, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook in the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three loops on our hook, and double crochet in the next double crochet. Chain one, double crochet in the next double crochet, Chain one, double crochet in the next double crochet. Then in the next double crochet, we'll work two double crochet cluster. Chain three, single crochet in the same stitch. Chain three, two double crochet cluster in the same stitch. and double crochet in the next double crochet. Chain one, and we'll repeat this all the way around. Chain one, and at the end of the round, we'll slip stitch to the third chain of the beginning chain four at the beginning of the round to join. And our next round starts with a chain four, which again counts as a double crochet chain one, double crochet in the next double crochet, 
chain three, and now we're going to treble crochet in the single crochet on the previous row. So it's yarn over twice, whoops, <laughs> yarn over twice, insert your hook in the single crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Chain three, double crochet in the next double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the next double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the next double crochet, chain three, and treble crochet in the next single crochet. And we're going to repeat this all the way around. At the end of the round, chain one and slip stitch to the third chain of the chain four at the beginning of the round to join. And that's what the end of round seven should look like. You'll want to repeat round six and seven for the desired length of your the height of your finished bag. And I'll show you here on the bag what that looks like. So for this one, we continued on so far. And then just like we started at the bottom where we did the oval and, the, the, and then did a couple rounds of straight double crochet for a band, we do that at the top as well. And then when you separate off to make the two sides for the handles, we do slip stitches in the center sections. Anytime you can add slip stitches to a bag, it creates a more firm texture for the border. So we did slip stitch in here, and then we come and do the final round of the top of the bag. This also has slip stitches as well. And that's where we create these really clever and beautiful straps that have foundation ovals on one side with a chain, which is more rigid than stitches. And then we finish it off with slip stitches on the other side so that the chains and the slip stitches both give us a really stiff, not stiff, but non-stretchy handle. And now I'm gonna show you how to make that handle. The beginning of the handle starts with foundation ovals, which is a chain three, and double crochet in the third chain from your hook. So whether you're making these specific handles and following the exact pattern, or you want to use this technique for making handles of any length, you would wanna make your foundation ovals the length of your desired handle or strap. So we're just repeating chain three and double crochet in the third chain from your hook. For the second round of the straps, we're working three double crochets into the side of each foundation oval around. The repeat for the third and final round of the strap is to slip stitch in each of the next three double crochets, which would be the three that were worked into the same foundation oval. And then before working into the next set of three, we're gonna slip stitch also into the space before the next stitch. I'll show you that again. So it's one slip stitch in each of the next three stitches and then slip stitch into the space before the next stitch. And you wanna repeat that all the way around. I'll show you what that looks like on the finished bag again. So just to recap, we did, a, we did an oval base, then we finished that off with a couple of rounds of working even in double crochet to create a band. Then we worked that really pretty lace stitch pattern that had a setup row a two a setup round and a two round repeat to create these really pretty floral or dragonfly motifs, however you decide to look at it. Then at the top here, in between, after a double crochet band as well, similar to the double crochet band at the bottom of the bag, we alternated some slip stitches and double crochets to give a nice firm edge to our bag. And then at the final rounds where we added a slip stitch to the sides of the bag, we also added these clever foundation oval and slip stitch handles that are very sturdy. And thanks to the chains on one end of the ovals and the slip stitches on the opposite ends, we have this really sturdy strap that is perfect for a market bag. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. And don't forget, all the links from the things that we talked about in this video are available in the video description below. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.